information indicates that as many as 8,000 of those North Korean forces have been deployed to the Kursk region. We've not yet seen these troops deploy into combat against Ukrainian forces, but we would expect that to happen in the coming days. Russia has been training DPRK soldiers in artillery, UAVs, basic infantry operations, including trench clearing, indicating that they fully intend to use these forces in frontline operations. Should these troops engage in combat, or combat support operations against Ukraine, they would become legitimate military targets. Well, let's cross over to Washington, D.C. now and speak to Glenn Alexander Crowther, who's a senior fellow at the Center for European Policy Analysis. Welcome to the News Hour. Anthony Blinken, we just heard there saying that he expects North Korean troops to deploy against Ukrainian forces in the coming days. And uh, it's worrying to hear that uh, he said that they would become legitimate military targets if they enter the battlefield. What do you read into that statement? They're absolutely going to be uh, legitimate targets if they if they go into Ukraine. Right now, they're deployed in Kursk. So the big problems with international law at this point are Russia is violating a number of sanctions. There's over 20 UN Security Council resolutions that, that have either produced or strengthened sanctions, including not hosting uh, military people. So the very fact that the North Koreans are in Kursk violates those. But if, uh, if they go into Ukraine, then they're part of a, an illegal uh, military operation, uh, illegal under the UN Charter. Uh, and so, of course, they would be legitimate targets for whoever wants to shoot at them. What do you think would be a response from Russia and North Korea to this? Well, I mean, there's not much the Russians or the North Koreans can do. If they've placed uh, North Korean soldiers on the battlefield in Ukraine, uh, honestly, uh, as, uh, as Deputy U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Robert Wood said, they will surely return in body bags because the casualties are so high. Uh, the Russians are running about 1,200 casualties a day in Ukraine. And the North Koreans are not as well equipped or trained as the Russians are. So you can expect them to have them at, at least as many casualties as the Russians are suffering. So the reports are, Glenn, that uh, North Korea has sent at least 11,000 soldiers to Russia. How does this, well, and 3,000 of them are deployed now close to the front lines in Ukraine. What impact does this have uh, in, the, uh, in the short term on the battlefield? Well, in the short term, it gives the Russians someone to try to push the Ukrainians out of Kursk because the, the Russians have not redeployed large-scale forces out of the Donbass in order to, uh, to defend Russia. So uh, what the Russians are doing is using North Koreans to defend Russian soil while the uh, Russians are attacking the Ukrainians. So this will, uh, this will help to the Russians to push the Ukrainians out of Kursk. We heard the NATO chief earlier this week saying that uh, this showed desperation, uh, a similar word also used here by Antony Blinken. Why is Russia doing this? Uh, because they don't have, uh, they don't have more soldiers. Uh, Putin is very reluctant to do a full mobilization, which is really what he needs based on their uh, attrition centric tactics, you know, they've lost 615,000 troops so far, uh, of, of which 115,000 dead. Th those are U.S. estimates. And so they just can't keep uh, affording that. So they, they're hiring people from overseas, and now they're bringing in the North Koreans just to give them bodies, especially in Kursk, so they can keep uh, Russian forces in the Donbass pressuring uh, the Ukrainians. Glenn, always a pleasure to speak to you and to get your thoughts. Thank you so much, uh, Glenn Crowther, speaking to us there uh, from uh, Washington, D.C. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.